We're out fishing a stream with handmade cordage for speckled trout. And we're taking a little break here in this spot to have a little bushcraft venison burger lunch and do a Q&A about the big wild year. Scoop it up with this handmade trout net that Delphine made. She wove all this fiber from nettle, milkweed, uh, and, and uh, dogbane fiber. Cheese? Thank you. Oh no, this has Yeah, it's uh, garlic and fennel, ground venison with ground pork, and we have some Montreal steak spice. Mm -hmm. These little uh, maple ones might make good coals in there. your trick that you're up to? Um, we didn't bring any butter, which is weird, um, but I had a can of oysters in my backpack because I usually always do, and they're in sunflower oil. So I'm going to pour the oil into the frying pan. And then just throw the oysters in the creek? Alright, so as you know from our Instagram, Facebook, YouTube accounts, we are undertaking one full calendar year of wild foods eating. And I think that there are some questions that people have asked that come up fairly frequently, and so we're going to address some of those while we cook venison burgers on a Bushlight XL. Is that what we're still cooking on? Bush box. Bush box. Bush box Excel stove beside a little creek that uh, I wasn't sure, but I recognized parts of it when we were here today. I fished this creek when I was like 14 or 16 years old. I recognized parts of it. Uh, question number one When does your diet start? Wild diet. The wild January diet. 1st. January 1st, 2019. It hasn't started yet. Um, so the other question is, I think people maybe get confused about, are we just starting from empty fridges on January the 1st? Or are we stockpiling some food in advance? Definitely stockpiling. Definitely stockpiling. Yeah. So the intent is not to uh, start like naked and afraid in the wilderness and eco to living from day one, January 1st, 2019, which in our area has about three feet of snow that is minus 30 degrees. Um, the intent is more, as I choke on venison smoke here, the intent is more to experience um, a traditional wild food diet that we forged ourselves and um, collect through the seasons and enjoy through the seasons in all of its many wonders. Question. Are we buying anything from the store? Wild salmon, wild caught cod. No, we're no. not buying anything from the store. No. Except for our children. Yes, we yeah. still have to feed too many children through this year and they are not participating fully in the big wild year challenge. So they are gonna be eating store foods as per normal. Smells pretty good. Mm-hmm, it's pretty ready. 
So I should cut some buns instead of yakking. Next question. Will you try to also collect all your own wild water? Hmm. Yeah, we talked about this a fair bit. Because there are some places to get spring water. And I think we will try to use them, but it's not really practical. No. Like, so for me, I have a little house in the country and I have the fortune of having a potable water spring or what I would consider to be potable water from a spring from the ground about 100 meters from my house. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty accessible. Um, Delphine does not have that luxury and so it would be harder for her to consistently collect water. But I think aiming to drink more spring water and less um infrastructure water is part of our goal as well next question yeah. are we growing any food for the big wild year yes it wasn't our intent to do that but we and so we planted them just a little bit louder though <laughs> am i whispering a little bit we were gifted some pepper seeds, and so we were planted them. Uh, we have probably 12 plants, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and hopefully we'll get some like, no, Hungarian, no, Bulgarian, and mm -hmm. uh, cayenne, peppers. cayenne peppers. So we planted three kinds of peppers. So we have some pepper spice. And, and last year, you we're gifted some garlic that we planted and yep. it's all come up really nicely. Yeah, so my garlic is in scapes right now. We'll be harvesting those scapes and probably set some of those aside. And then um, pick those garlic in a few weeks and dry them out a bit, cure them, so that we have some garlic for the big wild year. And we did try some corn that you had from a long time ago, but it did not have some blue Aztec flint corn mm -hmm. and I grew it successfully once and I found I'd stashed a bunch of it away in a mason jar. I don't know if it's viable anymore but I planted a few hills of it and maybe after the recent rain that we had we will uh, maybe some of it will sprout or maybe it's just too old. Flaming burger. Oh my goodness. Charbroiled. Isn't that what that is? Looking good. Can you please get a little bit? Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's good. Okay, next question. Um, where are we at in our preparations? So I did do a, a video update recently about picking and processing wild greens. So we showed all the greens that have been picked so far this spring and set aside, but that is not our full store of food, I would say. So no, we're um, just getting into berries and... Mm -hmm. We have berries frozen still from last year, mm -hmm. a significant number I would say. And I still have little bits of wild meat here and there in my freezer that I occasionally discover as I dig through. Um, but most of the meat stuff will happen this fall and then get frozen for next year. And then for fish, uh, we'll probably mostly be fishing yeah. and eating fresh or recently caught fish. Uh, as opposed to trying to stockpile it in the freezer in the same way that you would put aside a fair amount of moose meat or bear meat with big game animals. It's harder to do that with fish because of the catch and possession limits uh, and their availability at different times of the year. So fish will be sort of an ongoing pursuit 
through the year. Mm-hmm. It's a good excuse to keep going out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as videos go, I'm thinking to do a weekly update. Um, so a rundown on what we ate roughly for that week. Um, maybe do a meal feature along with that update. So a meal that really stood out for us in the week. Go into a little more detail and do a health update. Mm -hmm. So we might do... Um, I know people are dying to know if we're going to be ketogenic. We are trying to get a lot of berries and plants into our diet. This is not a carnivore as well eating year. Um, so I think as an uneducated guest that will maybe be in and out of ketosis a little bit um, but I did buy ketosis strips and we'll measure it on a weekly basis probably people also often ask hey can I send you something <laughs> and the answer is thank you so much but no yeah so we're pretty confident that we can gather what we need and we want it to be a fairly local. independent and local um, effort. We might trade some things with um, other foragers and harvesters and hunters that we know here. Um, but we're not looking for donations for throughout this year. I think we talked about trading for some things maybe? Mm -hmm. Primarily salt. Salt. <clears throat> yeah, it might be hard to go without salt. So we're thinking of trading somebody some of their craft salt for something. Yeah. Something that will catch or make or otherwise produce. Uh, next question is are we also cooking and preparing and storing food in all traditional ways? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. We are using uh, modern conveniences. So for me, this is partly about uh, conventional hunter-gatherer, the idea of a conventional hunter-gatherer, conventional forager. So all the tools that are available to us, we're using. Uh, our freezers are really important to storing uh, food, we're cooking on our home stoves. We also are for sure going to be doing um, outings and cooking on fires, so there'll be a lot of that as well. Um, but we are definitely using electric grinders and dicers and cookers and dehydrators and freezers and refrigerators through the year and in preparation for They just bought this ultralight hummingbird mm -hmm. hammock. Two person. <laughs> so we're relaxing. Eating burgers. So if you have any other questions about the big wild year, feel free to post them in the comments below. We'll answer them there. Or they'll become fodder for another question and answer video. <laughs> well, everything was going really well, and then uh, as we were climbing out of the hammock, it Bing. ripped first time using it. So yeah, so sad. I don't we'll We'll contact the company because I'm sure there's a dud in every batch um, and uh, hopefully they can just replace that because that did not stand up to any kind of any no, stress. No, supposed to be good for 400 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, maximum. 
anyway, that's kind of a sad end to our story. Um, we're gonna head out of here and that's it for this video. We're also trying to uh, test out some handmade cordage, um, catching trout in this stream. But uh, from what we've seen so far, there isn't water big enough to hold trout right now. It's pretty, pretty shallow. So I might have to go to some other trout holes I know and try my cordage out there. Anyway, that's, that's a wrap. We're just on our way back from the truck and uh, there's this painted turtle on the road. So it was not here when we were coming in, but it's here now. And it's got a bit of a nest started. So it's been digging with its back legs there. It's uh, not doing much of anything right now while we're here, but it seems pretty intent on doing what it's doing because Delphine pet it and it didn't go anywhere. And you can see two leeches hanging onto the shell. Here's a question for the turtleologists out there. Is the, are the scutes a living tissue on the outside of the shell and can the leeches get blood from them? Or are they just hitching a ride? You wouldn't even know this was a movie except the wind is moving those leaves a little bit. That turtle is as still as a still shot. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm.